This is the video where I go into what are the worst business sectors that you should invest money in, start or grow in. And I'm doing this from a position of experience. We're standing in my warehouse right now. I'm trading businesses myself. I employ people and I've made some mistakes and I've made some big wins. And I want to sort of wrap that up into a video here on YouTube so that you know what you should avoid with a 10 foot barge pole. And here's the funny thing about this video, because I'm actually going to talk about some of the sectors that I'm already trading in and what I've done to tweak them so that they are actually better businesses. When you can get a good model, then you can scale that model up and you know that you can rinse and repeat it. You know, like the McDonald's model, they know it works and they go and go again. We want to find the right models so that we're setting ourselves up for profitable businesses. Restaurants, one of the worst sectors that I've come across and there are some unicorns and I actually feel like I own one of those unicorns and I explain that at the end. And what do I mean by unicorns? Yes, there are a few that actually do make money, but as a rule of thumb, I think it's a really terrible business sector. There's also a little fact here is if banks are willing to lend to restaurants and hospitality businesses and they're not, they don't like them because the failure rate is absolutely huge. You've got low revenue per employee. Now, if you've got sectors that are high revenue per employee, it just usually means they're a lot more profitable. Let me give you a quick example. You've got a million pounds or a million dollars of revenue and you've only got two staff. You've got half a million pounds worth of revenue per employee. There's a good chance you're going to be super profitable. Not so with restaurants. You could do a million million pounds worth of turnover at a restaurant and you could have 30, 40, 50 staff. Why so many staff, you might say? We can have a lot of people just working part-time hours. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, everything's going like gangbusters and it could be like the Mary Celeste Monday to Thursday. That's something that you don't really want in a business. We want nice, boring, predictable cash flow. I don't like the high capex costs. So say you're going to set up a restaurant. It's going to cost you a million quid to set the thing up. You've got to pay that off over a period of time through depreciation. And say your restaurant makes between five and 10 percent net profit. Out of your profit, you've got to pay back the loans or the capital that's been deployed to set the, uh, the restaurant up. You pay that off over five or 10 years. Everything's great now. We've paid all of our capital costs off. But hey, loads of competition is opening within the sector. There's so many restaurants and they're going to steal some of your pie, even if you're better than them. And that means you've got fickle customers. It's a sector where the customers are so fickle, they want to try what's new in the town. And that's really hard to build loyalty, unlike other sectors as like an accountant. You know, as long as your accountant's doing a really good job, they're with you for the whole of their lifetime. One final challenge with this sector is, is the high rates of turnover taxes. You've got business rates, you've got VAT, insurance premium tax, and all the other cocktail of turnover taxes, which means that the government are taking more of your turnover than you're actually keeping in profit. But I did tell you that I have a restaurant. I actually own a big ice cream parlor. Why does that ice cream parlor make money and why does it do better than most in the sector? Well, it's big enough. So if you do really want to open a restaurant, make sure you've got capacity. Because you haven't got capacity, you can't leverage the management, you can't leverage the overhead, you can't leverage your catering team, you can't leverage your marketing. You need to make sure pref preferably you own the, the thing that you operate off so you haven't got high rents and the rents are going up all the time. And try and find legacy businesses. It's better to buy one that's been around for 50, 100 years so everyone knows it. And that's what I bought. I bought a 100 year old ice cream parlor that's big enough with the overheads were really low and very little competition because we're the legacy brand in the town. And that gives us that unicorn status where most are just about getting by. We're getting by and we're making profits and we're paying down our loans and we can refurbish the place. So there's my little tips if you are going to be in the sector. Dog walking, cupcake making and party planning. Three very me too, low barrier to entry sectors. When you start in a business, you want to be as high a barrier to entry as possible because it protects you against competition. Now those three sectors that I spoke about, dog walking, literally get yourself a lead and you're in business. And that means that you're vulnerable. People go, oh, they're making some money over there just walking a dog. I'll do the same. And that makes customers not want to pay very much because so many people can do it. You're effectively swapping time for money. Any business sector that is swapping time for money that cannot be scaled to be a commercially profitable enterprise that works without you in it should be avoided at all costs. Yes, it's attractive because you need no money to start it, but it's not attractive because no one wants to buy the thing when you sell. You're effectively just building yourself a profitable job and no one wants to buy a profitable job. If you want to build yourself a profitable job, the smart thing to do is just go and get a job and not have any of the risk of self-employment. The big Top piece of advice is be as high barrier to entry as possible, have that mindset and get rid of all that low barrier to entry stuff.
Boutique clothes shops. So many people have the illustrious idea of opening a stupid little shop. And what you're gonna get is stupid little results, which I don't want for you. I don't want you to put your effort, your time and energy in something that's not just gonna yield results. Retail's really difficult. The big boys really struggle with it. And you might think your little shop idea is gonna really work, but look at the facts. High streets are dying. And if you wanna be a really good retail shop, you've gotta make sure you're in a massively high footfall area. You wanna make sure your overheads are really low because you're going to be faced with this. You're going to be holding loads of inventory. You've probably got no experience of what inventory to hold and so therefore you're going to sit on lots of stock and stock is cash. I know because I hold 1.6 million pounds worth of cash for one of my other businesses and holding stock really can cause you cash flow problems. One way you could make boutique retail work and I still don't like it is making sure you're in a niche and remember there's riches in niches. So that could be doing specialist clothes for larger people or tall people because people would go out their way to find you but then you've got to make sure that you're known and you've got to have a big off street marketing off high street marketing campaign to bring people to you and you think of your retail shop as a showroom rather than a place to do business we're seeing cars moving into shopping centers right now and using that passing trade to show people the cars but they're not actually buying the car on the day and driving it off from the shopping center the retail that's going to work now is experience and showroom based where you don't actually need the shop to drive the revenue. It's a really difficult business to be in and I would avoid doing boutique retail at all costs. And I speak from experience. I used to own three party shops. The rent, the rates, the staff, the fickleness of the turnover. It was one of the most stressful times of my life. I would avoid it at all costs. I see in other businesses very difficult to make money from. Some of the worst that I've come across, that's hotels. And the comedy factor is, I actually own this hotel that we're in right now. And I only bought it a few months ago, knowing that they are very difficult to make money from. Why? Well, they're hugely capital intensive. You know, you need millions of pounds to set one of them up. Then when you've set them up, you've got customers that come and go. So you've not got regularity of customers. Well, you might have some contractors that come regularly, but it's not like a day nursery or a school or an accountancy practice where the customers are very, very regular. But also you need lots of staff and usually they're hospitality and leisure staff that are low skilled. And then you've got to train them up to make them highly skilled. And they're in a fickle marketplace. They could be you know, traveling or they could be at university. And that recruitment process is just getting harder and harder as people don't want to work in these industries as much huge capital expenditure, very difficult to staff. Now we've got a situation where we've got third party booking agents, the Airbnbs, the bookings.coms that actually own the data of your customers. And so it's really important that if you do want to get into this hotel industry, you've got to have very deep pockets, which is in a way makes you high barrier to entry, which is to me a very strong part of business. And you've got a hugely depreciating asset. You do these rooms up and then in three years time, because people don't really look after them, they're in and they're out. You have to redo them up all the time. So there's a constant need for more capital to go in to make you very competitive in a highly competitive marketplace. There's lots of hotels. But why do I like them? Well, for inheritance tax reasons here in the UK, you can pass the hotel onto your family inheritance tax free. They are a trading business with commercial property entwined into it, which for the UK is very tax efficient. And also I like if you can create multiple revenue streams. So when you've got an asset like this, you need to sweat it. So yes, we've got a very active pub bar function area, a restaurant area. We're doing meeting rooms and wakes, and then we're doing all my own seminars here. So why have I bought this hotel? It's because I've tweaked the model to make sure that we sweat the model more therefore we turn it into a commercially profitable enterprise and most hotels don't do all that stuff and that's why they struggle and they just about get by we don't want you to just about get by we want you to be super successful selling on e-stores that you don't own you know what i'm talking about here amazon ebay not on the high street etsy what i primarily don't like about this is yes they have a brand that people trust and they buy from them and that could elevate your revenues quite quickly but the main thing i don't like is they own the customer, not you. They own the email address. And that's one of the biggest no-nos in business because there's two things that I think make a business really valuable. An effective, profitable team that run the business, so it's a commercially profitable enterprise that works without you in it. But we also understand a database of customers is of huge value. And I've bought custom, um, companies based on databases alone. The customers that know and love and trust a business, and I want to buy into that. 
Well, if you're selling on Amazon, you're selling on eBay or Etsy or not on the high street, they own all of that. And if they decide to shadow ban you or just take your product off their website because they can buy it themselves and do it cheaper, and yes, they do do that, that's the end of your business. So it's actually better to do a bit more of a slowly, slowly catchy monkey approach and build your own customers using content marketing and your own e-web store. And that's why I bought Party Pieces. It's a brand that's sort of 35 years old. Everyone knows it. People come to our website direct. We get the email addresses. We own the customers. We've got the database and we build a big wholesale business. That's why I've got this massive warehouse. Literally every day, 10 to 20,000 pounds worth of wholesale business is going out each day, which gives me the volumes to do the little and often orders as well. I am on Amazon. I am on eBay. The problem is I feel like I'm just professionally moving money around for them. You know, we've employed someone full time to do all of our listings. Amazon keeps most of the money, but I am on there because I like the awareness. And if you are going to be on these e-marketplaces that are not your own, make sure you're building your own brand. Otherwise, literally the worst of the worst. If you're not creating your own brand by selling on all these other websites, just a disaster game. So just avoid it at all costs. Build your own brand, sell on your own website, build a wholesale business. That's the way to smash the internet. Another awful business to get yourself involved in is these events businesses. And they're really ego businesses. I mean, lots of the types of businesses that I'm talking about today around hospitality and leisure is like, oh, we own a coffee shop, or oh, we own a restaurant, or oh, we own a hotel. Well, look, this one here is another one of those, oh, I run my own events. But really, you want to be thinking about this from a business point of view, from a profit and loss point of view. And I'll tell you why events are so tough to make money. It's you've got to get lots of people to buy from you just once. And that's not good business sense. What's much better for business is this, a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. What you've got with events business is money once, that's it, it's over. You're not building a database. You might come back in a year's time. You've got loads of competition. You don't own the site that the event operates out of. You've got to hire stuff. You've got to buy stuff and use it just once. Now here's the oxymoron to this little description that I'm talking about. We're standing in a location that we own. This is Marsh Farm Animal Adventure Park. And in many ways, it's an events business. But what are we doing different? What have we done to improve the business model? model for profitability. Well, we own the site. We sell an event to someone, and then we create another event on the site that we own. We own the database and we've got events happening all the time on a site that we own. So when we invest cash into capital expenditure, we're getting to reuse that capital expenditure. We own the marquee big top behind me. We don't rent this thing. So we buy it once and we get to use it for years and years. We get to have the car park and do all the infrastructure in the car park and we own that thing. We're not renting out and paying loads of money on stuff that we never own. And there's massive tax advantages of owning stuff rather than renting stuff as well. They're some of the worst businesses that I've come across. Hope you like this video. Do me a massive favor if you do like it. Hit the like button, subscribe and hit me in the comments below. What videos would you like us to make next? See you real soon.